Hi, I'm Femi OK. Today on the stream, Nicaragua. Four months before presidential and legislative elections are due to take place, opposition voices are being detained. We spoke to one activist who talked about her take on why this was happening. Have a listen, have a look. In 2018, President Daniel Ortega of Nicaragua has led a violent repression towards the country's opposition groups, activists, journalists, or anyone who opposes his government ahead of election, knowing that he will lose if he opens free and fair elections. Ortega has arrested six potential presidential candidates, including opposition leader. He has closed all the democratic doors by limiting the competition, by arresting anyone who opposes his government or anyone who threatens his can candidacy. That is Anaise's analysis. What is yours? This is the big question that I am going to be asking. Is there room for opposition voices in Nicaragua today? Jump into the comment section, be part of our discussion right here on the stream. Let me say hi to the guests, introduce your panel to you. Tiziano, Jose Miguel, Lenore, so good to see you. Tiziano, introduce yourself to the stream audience. Hi everyone, thanks for having me. I'm Tiziano Breda, Central America Analyst at the International Crisis Group. Uh, we've been covering this crisis for three years now and came out with the early warning report just uh, days before the actual uh, crackdown started. So we, we have been in the country and we look forward to keep covering it. So timely. Jose Miguel, welcome to the stream. Introduce yourself to our international audience. Hi, my name is Jose Miguel Vivanco. I'm the executive director of the America's Division at Human Rights Watch. Um, unfortunately, Nicaragua is one of our top priorities in the region. And like the uh, International Crisis Group, we just published uh, a report about uh, human rights conditions in Nicaragua, where we are watching re really, really serious uh, setbacks. We're going to hear more from that in just a moment. Lenore, welcome to the stream. Introduce yourself to our international audience. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I'm Leonor Zuniga. I'm a sociologist and documentary filmmaker. Um, I have several publications about political culture, democracy, and media in Nicaragua. And my latest uh, work as a filmmaker are several documentaries about people in exile. So, yes, I'm going to start with a series of videos. Uh, in these videos, you will see a presidential candidate, an opposition leader, another presidential candidate, and a former Sandinista minister. What they did was make videos, and they released the videos. If I get in trouble, this is the video you will see. They were concerned. The fact that I'm able to show you the video shows that they're already in trouble. Have a listen. Have a look. Nicaraguan brothers and sisters, if you are watching this video, it is because I have been detained by Ortega's regime. If you are seeing this video, it means my house is being raided and I've been kidnapped. If you are seeing this video, it means I've been captured. If you are seeing this, it means I've been detained by the police. Lenore, you start, first of all, when you see this going on in your home country, when you first started seeing these videos coming out, what did you think? Well, I wasn't surprised at all. Actually, I know most of these candidates. Um, the situation of Nicaragua is not something that happens in the last month or it's not something that happened in the last three years. Um, it's actually, I consider, like, what is happening right now, like, the final step of a um, plan that has been consolidating for the last 30 years since Ortega lost power in the 1990 elections, that he is convinced that he wants to create a new political system that is not democracy and is not based in election, but it's based in one part, party lead for one family in which um, the country only has room for one way of thinking. So when we saw this, um, maybe what was surprising was the speed of how this happened, because the, now we have six pre-candidates in prison, but we knew that this was going to happen. It's just the new step of this, um, you know, building up this new political system. Jose Miguel, this is bold. It's not even subtle. It is uh, actually bold. It's something that uh, we haven't seen in Latin America in decades. Um, this idea that um, uh, the head of a state, uh, in this case a dictator, uh, could capture, 
could, uh, you know, detain uh, with no due process, uh, with fake charges. Uh, the, the, all the leaders uh, of the opposition, peaceful democratic opposition, uh, any of them could potentially defeat Ortega in a fair and transparent election. But the fact that he, he was able to, to make this move, uh, uh, I think it's very revealing of the state of mind of, uh, of Ortega and his wife, who is the vice president. Yeah. And, uh, and, 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 and it's important that uh, the international community react also in a similar bold way, mm -hmm. because otherwise um, Ortega is setting a very, very negative precedent for the entire region. I always do a double take when and I hear Ortega and his wife, the vice president. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> it's, a, it's quite shocking. I know there are political families, but that's a very close political family. Tiziana, for us as an international community, can you break down who is being scooped up and why? Um, well, I mean, Ortega is being basically rounding up on virtually all the sectors that um, uh, were former allies of him, even former brothers in arms, actually, um, or former governing allies in the community's uh, um, um, dialogue and consensus model, uh, model, models of Randy, basically, which he built with the, the private sector, for example. But also uh, directly to politician leaders, uh, political leaders, sorry, and uh, um, leaders of the movements that arose uh, in the 2018 uh, uprising, where hundreds of thousands of Nicaraguans uh, flooded the streets uh, and demanded for a change, and were basically met with uh, an extreme use of, of violence by, by police and power police forces. So President Ortega, just a few weeks ago, he actually spoke about why these arrests, these uh, mm. uh, detainees were being detained. Um, I want you to see if you can unpack it for me, because I am a little bit confused by the reasoning behind this. So let's play mm. the video and then you can help me understand. What is he saying? Aquí se está juzgando. We are not judging politicians here. We are not judging candidates. We are judging criminals who've attempted against the country, against the national security, against the lives of its citizens by trying again to organize another April 18, another coup d'etat. Investigate, denounce, prosecute those who have committed crimes against the homeland, those who have laundered money. The same as when a drug trafficker is tried. The same, the same, not a step back. There will be no step back, only forward. No, I... So I have Lenore leaning in. Um, uh, Jose Miguel is shaking his head. Um, Lenore, you start first of all. What does that mean? Can you understand what the president is saying there? Yes, uh, I mean, you have to understand that Ortega has to justify what he does. Okay. So he cannot justify this in a democracy. So what he's doing, he's justifying a reality that he's creating. What is this reality? Nicaragua is a country divided between friends, the Sandinista people, and enemies, everybody else. Mm -hmm. So because he cannot legitimize by himself in free elections, what he's doing is he's building this idea that we are kind of in a war, you know, between two enemy parties. And what he does with this is that he dehumanizes everybody else that is not part of this. A political party. So right now is not he's not talking about, for example, what happened in 2018 as a rebellion of the people against a dictatorship, which was what happened. I mean, we're talking about protests that included almost 10 percent of the population. You know, it was a really, really wide representation of the country. But instead of saying that, what he's saying is that he, that was an intent of coup d'etat. And at the same time, um, he's saying that because of this, everybody that was involved in that rebellion or was involved in criticizing the government is not a citizen and it doesn't have political rights. They are traitors. Go ahead, Jose Miguel. Femi, uh, I, I think it's important uh, for the audience to understand that uh, Ortega controlled Congress, the judiciary, the chief prosecutor office, the um, uh, Supreme Electoral Council, uh, the police and the army. And um, so full concentration of power. Last year, by December, he passed legislation to, to apply 
to his uh, to the leaders of the opposition. And this legislation is like old-fashioned Soviet legislation or Pinochet's legislation, which uh, allows the government to go after anyone who criticizes Ortega as the enemy of a state, as the enemy of the fatherland. And, uh, and that is pr primarily the charges against the leaders of the opposition. Uh, just because they have criticized the government, they have, uh, for instance, um, celebrate a decision from the European Union or Washington or Canada or, or the OAS to uh, condemn what is going on in Nicaragua, that makes them uh, a target of uh, legal repression. And most of them are in incommunicado detention with no due process, no access, access to a lawyer on a fabricated uh, charges. Yeah, yeah. I think what something that I think is important that Vivar mm -hmm. can say is that this political strategy that Ortega is building up has a legal frame, you know, has consequence. And there are four laws that Ortega approved in the last two years that are really important. One is the law uh, um, to protect sovereignty, which is pretty much trying to justify, to process anyone that has is considered a traitor. Other law is the cyber crime law, which is a law that is created to control any person that criticizes Ortega in the social networks. The that is against is the, the media. That is against the media that, and against journalists, media. essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Journalists, yeah. Um, the other law is the reform to the criminal code in which now, for example, if you are called by a judge to be like in prison, you don't have to be there. In the past, you need to be there for four, 48 hours and then to present it to a judge. Now you can be in prison for 90 days in order to be presented to a judge. Ooh. And the other, yeah, so it means that right now, this is what we are dealing with. Our, our, our political leaders are in prison and wow. they are not presented to a judge. And we speculate that they are alive in prison, but we don't have any evidence yeah, that yeah. they are alive in prison, you know? Titiano, I'm just looking at here. Um, uh, Nicaraguan yeah. police detained journalist Miguel Mendoza for alleged treason. So when you start controlling the media, then you are controlling the narrative. You were in Nicaragua a few months ago. What was the atmosphere like? Can you describe it? It's a tense environment. Um, although on the surface it, it appears to be calm, uh, yeah. and it's as quiet. soon as you stretch it, and you, it's quiet. There are no protests. There haven't been one in the last two years at least, um, you know, uh, people in the streets do their own things, the malls are filled with people. Uh, there are always, though, um, some police uh, patrolling roundabouts uh, uh, to quell any sign of minimum unrest. Um, but apart from that, you don't see, you know, um, you know a state of uh, absolutely, uh, you know, disintegration, social public disintegration, yeah. but as soon as you scratch the surface and you speak with people, uh, even uh, Sandinista, who proclaim themselves because are either first forced to or genuinely believed in the Sandinista revolution um, on social media, or because they are public employees, so they have to preserve their, their, you know, their, their employment, um, they also are very dissatisfied with the current situation. The thing is that you can really perceive the, on one hand the fear, the terror that has been imposed mm. uh, with these uh, with these laws, with this uh, de facto state uh, uh, police state yeah. that's been installed, mm. and on the other hand the disillusionment, the deception of what came out of the 2018 uprising, which translated into very minimum, uh, basically no gains in the, in the two rounds of talks between the opposition and the government, and was basically, you know, led to this creation of these movements, the Civic Alliance and the Blue and White National Unity, that basically turned what was a social demand for change into an electoral dispute. Uh, and their infightings uh, basically prevented um, the opposition groups to create, to band together and create an alternative. You know, we guess we've all, we've been focusing on this this moment right now where there doesn't seem to be room for opposition voices, which was the big question we were asking for this show. But there have been improvements um, in terms of agriculture and infrastructure. Nicaragua is not all. I have to be careful about how I say this. This is really for uh, 
Lenora to say really about what you see in terms of progress in mm. your home country rather than me mm. as an outsider saying this because I think this is also important which maybe explain why Ortega is still able to hold power other than running the military of course and the judiciary and <laughs> all of those institutions but also he has affected some change. Tell me about that, because I think that's important. We, we can't have just half a discussion. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think that actually I, before this program, I already rechecked what mm. was their results in terms of uh, the fight against poverty in Nicaragua. And according to the results to uh, the biggest, more respectful survey that is done in the country uh, around that, we have pretty much the same levels that we had 10 years ago. So it hasn't come out with so much progress, like the government would like to say. I think that we have had important changes in terms of infrastructure, infrastructure, like, you know, new hospital, new um, highways, new roads that were important and are necessary. I think, for example, Ortega did something important that a lot of people really like, is that he restored the center of Managua that was really um, forgotten. But the thing about Ortega is that, first of all, he hasn't done anything really to change the conditions that create poverty in Nicaragua. So what he has done the, are these programs that have tried to reduce extreme poverty, but with little, really minimum results. Mm -hmm. Because what happened? Ortega could do a small improvement in that direction, but the country is so unstable politically. And also, there is so little trust in the country right now. I mean, one of the persons that he put in prison right now is the manager of one of the biggest banks in Nicaragua, that there are no new investments. So there was a little protest at the beginning of the government, but because of the lack, uh, because a lot of people lost their jobs because of the political, continuous political crisis, pretty much we are kind of the same okay. that we were at the beginning of the well, government. Uh, yeah. One, one point that Leonor is uh, raising, uh, which I, I think is a, is a valid one, and I agree, is that um, uh, the, um, uh, dem uh, I mean, um, economic model of development uh, of Nicaragua has been mostly based uh, on uh, support from Venezuela. Uh, um, Nicaragua has been historically very close to Venezuela. Venezuela has been providing um, uh, very significant support to Nicaragua until very until recently, when the Venezuelan economy collapsed, and uh, and that is partially explained the um, uh, mobilization and demonstration, social unrest that happens in Nicaragua in April and May of 2018. Um, but um, the 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 support that um, that uh, Ortega has been able to build is basic, basically clientele support, individuals who are close to the, the ruling mm. party and get some benefits. But the reputation of Ortega and his family is a reputation of a kleptocracy. Mm. You know, this is uh, yeah. this is uh, a family who has, uh, uh, a, 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 I mean, accumulated tremendous wealth, uh, um, uh, of a, you know, in a country that is incredibly poor. And, um, and, 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 and it's not just Ortega and his wife, it's yeah. also... Uh, uh, the rest of the family and some uh, members Jose of the Miguel, empire. Do you know, when, when, I, when I look at uh, President Ortega, I think of the George Orwell novel, Animal Farm, where mm. the animals are uh, oppressed, so they overthrow the humans, and then the animals then become the oppressors. And it feels mm -hmm. like that cycle is happening yeah, in Nicaragua yeah, yeah. right now. Yeah. Let me bring in um, uh, uh, an international voice. This is the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Michelle Bachelet. And then I'm going to put a couple of questions to you from our YouTube audience. Let's start with Michelle Bachelet talking about the situation in Nicaragua. Let's have a look. For more than three years, this council has been analyzing in depth the human rights, social and political crisis affecting Nicaragua. Regrettably, I must report that almost none of the recommendations made by my office to the state of Nicaragua have been implemented. This crisis not only shows no signs of being overcome, but it has worsened alarmingly. I have so many questions for you, guests. I'm going to get you to ask these very, very quickly. Eduardo Gonzalez Castillo, thank you for watching. I'm Nicaraguan. My question is, what difference would external pressure have? Ortega will hold power no matter what, and the structure of corrupt power behind it will also support him. Tiziano, you take that one. Go ahead. 
I think there are two points here that's, uh, that are super important to take into account. First of all, um, of course, in, the external pressure is among the, the factors that need to be taken into account. Uh, but Ortega is mostly afraid of internal pressure, and that's why he's cracking down so heavily on the opposition. Um, that doesn't mean, having said that, that the, the, the international community should not or you know, should just uh, leave the Nicaraguan crisis uh, mm -hmm. at the margins of their attention. We actually advocate to bring the country back in the map when it wasn't, because unfortunately, Bachelet, uh, Jose Miguel, uh, Human Rights Watch, uh, the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights were the only international bodies basically looking at the country uh, in the last couple of years because everybody got wow. distracted by so the pandemic and the country would seem to be turn back into sort of a... So let me see if I can squeeze one more, one more YouTube question in. Yeah, so because sorry. the audience are really keen to talk to you. No need to apologise. It's, it's great to listen to this. Christopher Meza, uh, this one I'm going to put to you, uh, Jose Miguel. The Sandinistas control two-thirds of the electorate. Good luck overthrowing a democratically elected government. That is a take. <laughs> what is your take? Very quickly. Elect... I mean, uh, come on. Um, Ortega is, uh, is a dictator. He controls everything, and uh, there is no democratic institution in the country that is um, able or capable to prevent abuses, to investigate um, abuses, or to hold Ortega or his, uh, you know, uh, regime accountable for anything. So, um, uh, you know, in this particular case, where people are exposed to uh, gross violations of human rights. Uh, the international standards uh, not only allow but also demand uh, the uh, attention from the, from the international community. I think that the Organization for American States, for instance, mm -hmm. have enough grounds to suspend okay. Nicaragua from membership in the Organization for American States because it's not a democracy. Let me put this video comment to you, Leonor because it's a really interesting. It brings us full circle back to the November elections. This is Kai Thaler, and he's not hopeful about what these elections might um, look like. Uh, come off the back of his video immediately with a brief response. Barring unforeseen events, Nicaragua's government is extremely unlikely to change course and hold free and fair elections this year. The government has withstood international pressure and sanctions in the past, the main opposition presidential contenders are all jailed. Free speech and freedom of the press have been thoroughly suppressed despite the efforts of independent journalists continuing. And the government has re-energized members of its base. So there are very few incentives to shift and hold genuinely free and fair elections. Whew. I'm asking you to call yes. it. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. Uh, I mean, I agree. The situation mm. doesn't uh, look well. Uh, we are in an almost impossible situation, but we are not a company. We are a country, and we have to continue finding solutions. <laughs> so for me right now, one of the points that I want to raise that I think we don't talk enough is that we have to neutralize um, the control that Ortega has over guns over the army and over the police. And I think that one of the things that the international diplomacy has to do is to really cut the money and the power that is getting to the army and to the police. Because right now, the majority of the population is against Ortega. And if we have free elections, we are going to win Ortega. The problem right now is that even if we have really strong voices, these guys have guns. And even when you have really strong voices, guns can kill these voices. Right. Lenore, so what we need to do right now you. is neutralize this power. Lenore, thank you. Um, Jose Miguel, thank you. Tiziano, thank you. We, we could keep going. But right now I have to wrap up. But I want people to know where they can come for great information. So have a look here on my laptop. You should be following right now. Lenore, Jose Miguel and Tiziano for their takes and analysis on what is going on in Nicaragua right now. Thank you, YouTube audience, for your excellent questions. Really enjoyed putting them to the guests. I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.